Lord. So how are you feeling this morning? You're all good? Wasn't that an awesome time of worship? Wow. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I just, um, I've been asked to speak on membership. Do you want to put the first slide up? And um, why should I give to my church? And this isn't meant to be a three-quarter of an hour offering talk. No, I won't be talking about finances particularly, but really about becoming an active member. But first of all, I just want to honor all of you, particularly Pastors Will and Bob, for all that they sow into the church. They sow their lives for Christ in this place. And for all of you, too, who just pour out your lives serving Christ in this place, we just really appreciate all that you do, all that you contribute, all that you sow your lives into in this place. And um, I just really... um, Well, it was interesting. I went yesterday with um, our son. We took him over to um, the Football Academy over in uh, St. George's Park. It's just north of Yoxall. And we had a cream tea. And he wasn't particularly interested with the cream tea, even though it wasn't the cheapest cream tea we've ever had. But it it was nice. And they let us bring stuff home in a box. But when we actually went down to the academy, we didn't know that they did tours there. And he actually went in there and he saw all the... Well, he didn't see all the facilities, but he saw some of the facilities... It was like he was living on, it, on something else, you know. He was so excited. So we booked a tour for him. And he's like, on the basis of that, he's actually got up early this morning. He's found a team that he can play for or who, who might be able to give him a game. And he's gone out. So he's inspired. I mean, that's his thing. Okay, it's football, you know. But, uh, and we have different things. We have different hobbies. But above all else... It's Christ, isn't it? And we want to serve him. We want to be excited about him. We want to be serving him in whatever area that we can. And uh, just as I was doing some, um, some research on this, I, I came across this thing on the internet, which is eight reasons we don't give. And this was really around financial giving, but I, I think it's got wider, uh, a wider context than that. So the first uh, reason that they put up was that um, I don't have a home church. And you might say, well, what is a home church? Home church is where you feel at home. It's basically you feel you're part of something, you're part of a family. You feel like maybe there's a sense of belonging there. You know, and if you feel that that's how you feel when you come in here in a a Sunday morning or in other things that you do during the week, then that sounds to me like this is your home church. Amen. The second one was, we don't understand the concept of giving And and this probably is part of the issues around our society because a lot of our society is really about taking. It's not about giving. You know, and I I was just thinking back to the riots that were on uh, not that many years ago. And there were people there who had a steady income. They had a really good job. They had a settled existence. And yet, what did they do? They joined in the riots. They were plunging things just because they didn't have to pay for it. It's like suddenly they became a totally different person. But that's because our society is so geared towards what you can take rather than what you can give. And I know you're not like that here, I know that. (laughs) This is just sort of hypothetical, really. (laughs) So thirdly, we're not committed to the vision or mission of the church. You know, you can attend a church and have a wonderful time, but really... You know, you maybe have reservations about something about the uh, mission or the vision of the church, something maybe you don't agree with. You know, and I'm sure that when Jesus was uh, preaching to the, all those people, thousands of people, you know, even amongst his own disciples, I'm sure there were people that had question marks about the things he was saying. In fact, there's one time in his ministry it said that he talked about him giving himself as the bread of life to die and that people would eat him. And it says, the Bible says that lots of people left. They just couldn't handle that. You know, and sometimes we do get issues and problems, but because we're family, we can talk these things through. We don't need to get offended. We don't need to get upset. But that is a reason sometimes we don't give. A bad church experience. You know, and uh, that can happen to all sorts of people, you know, and it it can be a really genuinely horrible thing. Somebody has been very unchristian in in a previous uh, relationship you've had, or you've been in a church where it's just not worked out well, you know, I know that happens to people, but, you know, the thing is, in Christ, we can move on. We can just let it go. Forget it and move on. Forgive the people involved, you know. We need to realize that um, baggage is something we just take on holidays. It's not for life. Amen. Amen. And we know that there is a great place. We have a baggage room, you know, in this church. It's all over the body of Christ. 
It's called the foot of the cross. So if you have baggage, stuff that you really don't want to hang on to, just leave it at the foot of the cross. And Jesus will take care of it. Amen. So the fifth one was, I don't agree with how the finances are managed. Uh, it's an easy one, this. All you need to do is go and speak to Phil. You know? <laughs> no, no, no. No, seriously. You know, some people don't, you know, we, sometimes we don't quite agree with the, the way our, our finances are managed, you know, sometimes how things are given out, whatever. But again, because we're part of family, you know, we can talk about these things. We can have a discussion about it. We don't need to just take our teddy home and, uh, you know, decide, why well, we're not, well, not going to do anything else. Uh, the sixth thing is unemployed. And really what this is talking about is I don't have anything to give, you know, whether it's finances or whether you feel you don't have any gifts. Well, my Bible teaches that God has given gifts to all. Amen. You know, if you're part of the body of Christ, if you're born again, you're filled with God's spirit. He's the one that has the gifts. And he's got you. Therefore, you have something to give. Amen. You know, and it's just about finding your right place. You know, and God will give you wisdom. And I'll go on to talk a little bit later about how we can begin to explore, you know, where we fit in the body and how we can help and contribute and things like that. And it may be that you, some people support other ministries, you know, so it may be that you're involved in ministry and it's a time thing. You just don't have the time to give into your local church as much as, as, as you want to give to your ministry or another ministry. That's fine. Um, just honor God in what you're doing. Amen. And the last one, uh, you know, sometimes it's easy to think that others will do it. Or maybe it's around that person is much better than I could ever be. And you know the Bible says God's no respecter of persons. You know, Jesus taught about actually financial giving, it was. And he, he, he gave the example of an old woman who gave away two small coins, it's like two pennies. You know, and Jesus was marveling at her because her heart attitude was right. It's not about the amount that you can give. It's not about how amazing your gift is, your talents or your abilities. It's just a willingness to give it at the end of the day. That's the important thing. And it's not even giving necessarily in terms of recognition, but it's about giving unto God to honor him and in response to his word. So I just thought I'd talk a little bit about, it is bouncy this, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, why do I need to give? And I just thought, what better example could there be than Jesus' example? You know? Because he gave himself for the church. This is what it says in uh, Ephesians 5 and verse 25. Well, first of all, in John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, and if you don't know Jesus you want to know him. He's given his life for you this morning. Amen. And he wants to know you. He wants to have a relationship with you. Anyway, in Ephesians 5, verse 25, and this is a passage where Paul's talking about relationships, really. Talking about husbands and wives. And he says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Also, he gave gifts to the church in Ephesians 4, and verse 11. And this is talking about... Um, how the church should properly function. The whole passage there is really worth a read. And it, it says in uh, verse 11, now these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, then it goes on to list them. And then in verse 12 it says, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So ministry involves work. You know, and it needs everybody in the body to participate. It's not just a few who are part of the worship team or who stand at the front or who, you know, have positions in the church or whatever else it is. You know, the, the call is to the whole body. That the whole body needs to respond in order that um, it, it can be. And I love the way it says at the end of that passage, um, uh, after verse 11, it says... Christ, from who, in verse 15, the end of verse 15 and verse 16, Christ from whom the whole body, joined and knit together, the whole body is all of us, joined and knit together by, every, by that which every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part, it doesn't say some parts, but it says every part does its share and causes the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. 
And Jesus gave the Holy Spirit, and this is, this is in uh, John 20 and 22. It says, then Jesus took a deep breath and breathed into them. Receive the Holy Spirit, he said. You know, the Spirit was his life, which he breathed into the disciples. You know, it came in power. The Holy Spirit came in power at Pentecost. It's part of our birthright when we become Christians. We're born again of the Spirit of God. We get baptized in the Spirit. We're empowered to go out and be witnesses for him. And Jesus gave that as an amaz- him rather as an amazing gift to the church, part of who God is. And finally, uh, as part of Jesus' example, he said, he came to serve, not to be served. And in Matthew 20 and 27 and 28, this is a really interesting passage as well, actually, because um, the mother of two of his disciples, uh, James and John, came to him and said, I would love if my sons could be the most important people in your kingdom. You know, I'd like one to sit on the left-hand side and one to sit on the right-hand side. You know, it's a little thing, really. And Jesus said, well, I can't, I can't answer your request. I can't give it. It's up to my father. It's up to him who it will be. And, uh, but um, will you die a death like mine? And they said, oh, yeah, we'll do that. And they didn't even realize what they were letting themselves in for. And he said, yes, you will. But still, it's still not in my power to decide. It's up to the father. And so the other, the other disciples got in a real bust-up about it because they thought, what on earth are they doing trying to be the best ones? You know, we're the best ones. And this is what Jesus said. He says, whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has done. He came to serve, not to be served, and then to give away his life in exchange for the many who were held hostage. You know, he came to, be, to serve and to give. That was his primary, primary reason for being here. And he came to give so that we might have life and life in all abundance. And it's not talking about being a, a slave or a servant when you feel like it. it uh, Paul talks about being a bond servant. Yeah. It's like you have no choice. You are a servant, come what may. You know, if you're having an off day and your master says, do this, uh, he's not going to be happy if you just stay in bed and say, oh, oh I've got a headache today, sorry. <laughs> you, are, you have to be there at all times whether you feel like it or not. And um, the next example, I thought, was the early church's example. This is amazing what happened in the early church. If you read in Acts 2, you know, this was after the day of Pentecost, or on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples had been praying together in the the room. There were only 120 of them uh, left. They were praying, you know, and we've heard this morning how important it is to pray. You know, I'd encourage you to think about who you might get together with as a prayer partner. You know, whether to pray for half an hour a week or maybe 10 minutes a day, it's it's not a big commitment, but it will make such a big difference to you personally, but also to the life of the church because it taps into God's power. Amen. And he's the one that's going to make things change. But sometimes we need to change first. Or be willing to change. Anyway, this, this is on the day of Pentecost. And the, the Holy Spirit came, they saw the tongues of fire on the heads of the disciples. They started speaking in different languages. They were getting a bit confused because they weren't sure what was happening. And then they heard all this uh, ruckus outside. And it was uh, all the people had come for the, uh, the celebration. They'd come from all around the Mediterranean area. The Jewish people had come to the temple to have a big celebration. And so they went out and Peter started preaching. They were all speaking in different tongues. And they were speaking, and some of them were speaking in the languages of the people from the different parts of uh, around the Mediterranean. So it could have been Italian or Greek or whatever the languages were at that time. But what these people heard were they heard the disciples praising God in a language that they understood. And then Peter got up to preach. And he spoke a, a long time about who Jesus was and why he had come. He demonstrated from things that happened in the Old Testament, quoted scripture from there, and and he was really preaching the gospel to them. And in verse uh, 37, this is their response. It says, cut to the quick, those who were there listening, asked Peter and the other apostles, brothers, brothers, so what do we do? And Peter said, change your life, turn to God, that means to repent, turn around and be baptized each of you in the name of Jesus Christ so your sins are forgiven and receive the promise of the Holy Spirit this promise is targeted to you and your children but also to all who are far away whomever in fact our master God invites you know and if you, if you want to know Christ this morning that's all you need to do you just need to turn to him repent of your sins ask him into your life 
and he'll come. Amen. And he'll be with you forever. He'll never leave you or forsake you. And that's an amazing promise. And this is what happened. Verse 41, it says, That day about 3,000 took him at his word, were baptized, and signed up. They became members of that first church. Imagine having a church of 120, and then the next day, or that afternoon, you've got 3,120. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> that is God's power at work. Amazing. Yeah. But the thing is, they signed up. And in verse 42, it says, they committed themselves to the apostles' teaching. They committed to life together. They committed to the common meal. That's often what we talk about communion. They say breaking bread. And to praying. So for right from the start, you know, prayer was an important part of what the church is. And this word, um, or the word for this um, life together, in other versions it talks about fellowship. And the Greek word for that is koinonia. And what that means is a, a sharing, a unity, a close association, really like family, a partnership and a participation. So these, these, um, these early uh, converts, they didn't just come and be part of the church and just listen. They actually were part of, an active part of the church. They were already beginning to do things, beginning to contribute. It says, uh, or it goes on to say in the subsequent verses, that they actually, a lot of them sold their belongings and then they gave them money to be shared so that those that had need would have that need satisfied. They live together almost like as a sort of commune. You know, it's almost getting a bit, oh, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. But that was how they lived in the early church. Such was the power of God. Such was the unity together that God brought about. That they were just really in love with God, first and foremost. But they loved each other with with an everlasting love as well. There was such a powerful unity. And as a result of that, uh, it says in uh, verse 46 and onwards, it says... They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple, followed by meals at home. Every meal a celebration, exuberant and joyful, as they praised God. People in general, this is the people in the town, in the city of Jerusalem, liked what they saw. And every day their number grew, as God added to those who were saved. So, God gave a a favor to them amongst the people that they were living amongst. And God continued to draw people to his son, Jesus, and for them to realize who he really was and to actually begin to be members of the church. And uh, this is such a powerful thing. And, um, you know, God has the same plan for us here. And I just want to point out that if you're born again, you are part of the body of Christ. God's done that. It's already happened. You're a part of that. You don't need to sign anything. You don't need to write anything down. God has already adopted you, as as the Bible says, into his family. He is your father. You are his son or daughter. And that's a done deal. Amen. Amen. And, you know, if you don't know Christ, but you want to know him, that's available for you today. But but what we want to do, because we have practical considerations, because we're a charity and we're part of the, the... there are legal things that we need to do. We need to keep a list of members that we can give if they ask. And so what, what you all have been given this morning, uh, along with your notice sheet, is, um, you won't be able to read it on the screen, but it's just a sheet that, that gives a summary of, of what I've been talking about this morning, about the early church from Acts 2, and some of the, some of the it says, actions of a member. So these are some of the things that if you're a member of the body of Christ, this is how we, this is how we are, this is how we behave. And, and there's an opportunity about halfway down the page. If you're willing to sign up so we can keep that list to, as a member of this church today, then what I'd like you to do is fill your name in and sign it and date it. And I, I've got a box I'll leave on the stage for you to put your forms in. And if you're not comfortable doing that, pray about it and think about whether you'd be willing to do it. And bring, you can bring your forms back another week, that's fine. <coughs> But if not, we would love to keep in touch with you. And if we don't already have your contact details, we'd love to have them. There's a space on the form below that for us for you to put your uh, name and address down so that we can just keep in touch with you as well. And then right at the bottom, um, there's some opportunities. If you want to sign up for gift aid 
or you're interested in becoming part of the welcome team. These are just some illustrative things, really. Um, and on the back, um, although you'll be giving your form in, so I haven't really thought this through. Um, oh, there's some separate forms. Brilliant. Thanks, Howard. On the back is just a list of our values. Um, I can't remember. It was, it was maybe earlier this year that uh, we preached on the values. They're on our website. You'll probably see copies of them on the notice sheet. And this, this is really describes who we are as a church here. So if you, particularly if you're new to the church or you've only been coming a, a short time, we'd love you to, to read through that sometime and just, just see and, and pray about uh, becoming a member of the church in that sense. And then this, you won't be able to see this either. But I know um, Pastor Will talked about the reach, teach, and mobilize areas of our church life. And then below this, we've got a whole load of areas a lot of them are existing areas like children, youth, uh, men's work, ladies' work, uh, life groups, and so on, that are already happening in the church. But some of them are new areas. And so this is also my appeal to you, really, that uh, we'll hear more about this in the, few, in the next uh, few weeks and so on, but uh, we are looking for people who are willing to help out in different areas. And so... Don't be surprised if someone comes and maybe asks you to be part of that area uh, to help. Uh, I'm sure we'll be putting stuff up at the back so you can see what areas are involved. But it's just to have a think about it. Or it may be that you already have an idea that, um, or something that you, uh, you an area you'd like to uh, take forward or get involved with. I'm thinking of the, you know, the sort of painting that Mike and Sylvia have been doing with um, Pete and the cake making something like that. We, we'd love to hear about those sorts of ideas where we can, you know, uh, get something going around uh, someone's interest that, in the church, which could be something else to get people involved into. So um, it's just something to have a think about. Um, but that's all I really wanted to say today. Um, you don't need to become a member or sign this piece of paper to be part of the body of Christ. You know, if you're born again, you were already in the body of Christ. You know, we, we really bless you and we really appreciate you for all that you've been doing, all that you continue to do, for the way you sow into the life of the church. If you don't want to uh, commit to being a member for our, for our records, if you like, at the moment, that's fine. Um, but pray about it. Consider, you know, is this a place you feel at home? Is this somewhere you'd like to commit to being? Is this somewhere you'd like to be, become more involved? Because, um, you know... We need all the people in the body, all the giftings to be operating, to be that effective uh, body working in this place of Rugeley so that we can accomplish all that God wants to accomplish with him here. So um, I really praise God for you and uh, thank you for your, um, your consideration of this. And um, um, if, you, um, if you don't know Christ but you want to learn more about him, then you know, feel free to come up and talk to me or any of the other leaders, uh, Christine or Will and Barb, uh, at the end, and we would love to talk with you more about it if you want to find out more. You know, if, you, um, if you feel that you would like to uh, have prayer for a particular situation, for wisdom or for healing in your body, again, we'd love to pray with you this morning. We'd be delighted to pray with you. Because um, you know, if you read about the early church in Acts, God has healing. That's part of what it means to become a Christian. It's part of your birthright, you know, and um, walking in wellness and walking in wholeness. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to pray with you this morning. So um, thank you for listening. Have a great day. I'll hand back over to Pastor Will. For life. They could have had life and life with an abundance. You and I need to become men and women who are willing to share that love of Jesus.